Justin from Bullfinch's Restaurant here in Sudbury um, doing the Gorilla Gourmet. I'm here with my friend Bob Heisen from Heisen Photography and Framingham. Not that he does too much photography nowadays. He kind of comes out of retirement every once in a while. He's too busy traveling the world and uh, <laughs> buying new automobiles. So he just stops by every once in a while. Um, we're here at uh, a house in Sudbury. We're here with uh, Renata and uh, Noah. Uh, two other members of the family were missing, Carl and uh, Noah. Noah was a good boy, went to school today, and Carl was a good guy and went to work today. I'm oh, sorry, that's Caleb. Went Ka to I'm sorry, Caleb went to school. Noah's here with us. Sorry. Sorry, Noah. Will you, will you forgive me? Uh, I'll, have it, I'll have it straightened out by the end of the show. So, uh, Gorilla Gourmet, we come into people's homes. We poke through the uh, cupboards, freezers, refrigerators, and uh, much like you do at home, we try and try and create something for you uh, for dinner, snack, whatever the case may be. Um, we know uh, Noah, right? Noah? Okay, good. We know Noah loves chocolate, so we, there's definitely we're gonna make some uh, we're gonna make some hot fudge sauce for him, some real simple hot fudge sauce because I know he likes vanilla ice cream. So that's definitely on the plan. But I came across some other nice stuff. Uh, some stew meat, so we're going to make a simple beef stew, and I uh, found a nice butternut squash, we're going to make a butternut squash soup, and uh, teach how to make a little Parmesan twill or a little Parmesan crouton to go on top of it, and uh, obviously the hot fudge sauce for, uh, for later on. That's probably the only thing that you're going to eat out of the <laughs> meal, right, is just the hot fudge. Right. The Parmesan twill might be Parmesan, yeah, we'll try cheese, it. Right? Well, it's, yeah, crispy. without the bread, little crispy Parmesan. Well, we're going to use um, Grana Padano, which is also uh, from the Parmesan rich. Yeah. Grana Padano. Okay. All right. How do you say it? Grand Padano. Grand Padano. <laughs> Sounds like Grand Piano. But uh, very, si very similar to Parmesan. Very similar to Parmesan. So the first thing we're going to get doing... Uh, get started obviously is the beef stew people always ask me um you know uh the hardest part is getting everything together at the same amount of time and so i just try and think of what's going to take me the most amount of time and that's the first thing i start with and what's going to take me the least amount of time that's what i put off to the very last so we're going to make uh, beef stew we're going to get started with that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, brown up our beef we're going to get that started and while we're doing that i'm going to prep some vegetables to go into it a uh, little bit of olive oil in the pan. Uh, I speak to folks about olive oil at cooking school, and I say uh, you don't really need to spend the money for extra virgin olive oil if you're just sautéing with it. Uh, pure olive oil is fine. Oftentimes I say uh, when you try extra virgin oil, you taste extra virgin olive oil, it can be smoky or pungent or really olivey. And oftentimes, you don't necessarily want that flavor in your food. If you're, um, you know, poaching a nice little or sauteing a nice little scallop or a piece of sole or something like that, you'd rather have um, just a kind of a faint hint of olive oil. I always test my pan. If you notice, just splashing a little bit of water in there to. Uh, to check temperature. And what I'm doing when I do that is I'm really listening to the water. What I'm listening for is the sound that I want whatever I'm putting in into the pan to make. So uh, with this, uh, you had some uh, stew meat. This is uh, extra lean uh, certified Angus choice. Generally, when I do stew, braising, anything like that, I look for a little more fat content. Um, I know we're all watching our watching our. Uh, weight and figures, especially Bob. I know he's very concerned about Thanks his figure. Lot, he's trying to get into beach shape. But fat <laughs> is flavor. Fat is flavor. Uh, fat is flavor. So um, I, I'd prefer uh, a little more beef fat than butter or stuff like that. So, um, but this will work out fine. The, one of my favorite meals is something that's been braised. Uh, the reason being, you kind of take a uh, not so pretty piece of beef or veal or whatever the case may be, you know. Um, Oso Boca is a great uh, example of, you know, an ugly old shin bone. Short ribs too. Short ribs, yeah, you just take an ugly piece of meat, 
uh, with lots of fat and cartilage in it, a little bit of patience, and you end up with uh, a beautiful, beautiful um, end result. And to me personally, uh, it tastes much more like beef hmm. than say, you know, a, a filet mignon or something like that, just because it has uh, it has sat in its own juices and its own fat and so on. So I. Uh, just give it a light sprinkle with flour. Now, what this does is it, uh, it's kind of a twofold. It, it uh, creates a little, creates a little yeah. crust on the, uh, on the beef, but also it will help to thicken our stew. Just the uh, little, bit of, little bit of flour in there. So we'll go right into our pan. And you notice just a, just a little bit of sizzle. I'm not looking for uh, anything crazy because I, I really just want to kind of slowly brown these brown these pieces. Whenever you set them in, try and set them in away from yourself so that if you do drop them, you don't splash oil up on yourself. I hear them sizzling over here. They are sizzling, yeah. And uh, don't crowd your pan. Really big mistake because if you had a big mound of beef here, you would never get all those pieces to brown individually. You wouldn't have room to turn them over. You'd kind of be, they'd be browning and steaming and wouldn't really come around. So while those are browning, just a quick dip. I've got a little sanitizing solution over here. Quick dip in there. We're going to start prepping our vegetables. Probably the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get our, uh, get our butternut squash bisque going. For that, I start with a little bit of onion. Garlic too? No garlic? Not, no, I'm going to put garlic in the beef stew, all right, Bob? You just relax, okay? okay. You know how I love Ends that. off the onions. Uh, we, we talk about at cooking school all the time how to, uh, how to cut onions without crying. Yeah. The you only can't. <laughs> no, you can. Uh, swim goggles. <laughs> or they make, uh, they, make, they, they make onion goggles. But basically, swim goggles work because they seal the eye off completely from from the. Did you know that onions can make people cry? This one might yeah. make you cry today, depending on. A lot of time, it depends on also uh, how fresh they are, whether or not uh, if yeah. they're really fresh, they'll have lots of lots of juice in them. So we're going to dice an onion. I like to do a nice fine dice. Sir, you notice that? That's when you start cooking in the kitchen, all right? Show me bear claw. There you go. Tuck everything back behind. So this is to this is to start our butternut squash. Bisque. Got a pan right here. Now with uh with my bisque. I mean, I kind of cheat. It's not really a, a bisque because I don't necessarily cream the, uh, run it through a blender. I dice the onions really fine and then we'll mash the butternut. Is that uh, the definition of a bisque? Is a bisque? I don't know what the definition of a bisque is, to tell you the truth. To tell Thank you, you for being honest with me, Scott. Yeah, if I had, um, you know what I, uh, well, I mean, I've got my iPhone with me, which I'm sure will, will, <laughs> would do that. Um, but if you're ever looking for a gift for uh, a foodie friend, if you've got a foodie friend, uh, we've got a dog-eared copy in the uh, restaurant kitchen. It's called Food Lover's Companion, and it's basically a little encyclopedia of food. A, I a that. to yeah. Z. Yeah. That's cool. Now, when you're cutting hard stuff, like butternut squash, carrots, stuff like that, you'll notice I always get the blade started before I make a downward motion, because especially with hard uh, vegetables, the blade likes to try and kick out. So I really try and get it started before I really make that downward motion. And um, you know, this butternut squash, normally you've got the top and then the flared out bottom. What I will normally do is I'll cut that right, uh, right where it's, the, the, I'll cut the neck off, because I can yeah. peel the neck straight down, and then I can kind of use the knife around the, uh, around the bottom of it. 
but you notice kind of just a gentle sawing motion. And we'll probably have to go back, normally you have to go back on the bottom and just do a little trim up. So it's not faster using a peeler? Uh, yeah. Normally I find that uh, you have to do two peelings on a butternut squash to get, uh, to get both the outer and it's got a kind of a, a white inner greenish, uh, greenish layer on it. Uh, for me personally, it, it may be easier if you don't have uh, great knife skills or your knife is not very sharp. That's really the key to a lot of prep work in the kitchen is a um, super sharp knife. It really makes all the difference. And I, I tell folks, uh, get your knives sharpened. Depending on how much cooking you do, get your knives sharpened twice a year, probably professionally sharpened. There is a uh, professional sharpening service uh, up in Marlboro called the Village Sharpener. Um, and there's lots of mobile places that will come around. Do you have a compost pile or anything? Or? You know, we had a compost pile and the raccoons got it. Yeah, and that's the last thing you want kicking around out back. Um, so get your knives sharpened uh, professionally and um, get a home honing device. Uh, steel is a honing device. It's not necessarily a sharpening device. Um, kind of straightens the blade and grinds it down ever so slightly. But they make great uh, units that you can just set on your countertop and draw the knife through. Mm -hmm. So when you're finished, uh, especially with harder stuff, when you're finished, say, finished chopping all these vegetables for your stew, uh, clean the blade and then hone it and then and then move on. So also, these kitchen stores, I know there's one in Sudbury and William Simone, a couple times a year they come and representatives from the knife manufacturers come down and they shop in the knives. For exactly. A uh, spoon? Just a regular... So you get, can you guys smell that beef starting to brown up? Okay, good. That's what we're looking for. And uh, as I said with my onions, I'm just looking to uh, wilt them. I don't want to necessarily brown them. I just want to wilt them. You want to scoop out the seeds for me? Want to try? Okay. See what I here? I'm going to do. I'll do this one, and then you do this one for me. Just use the spoon hear that little scrapey sound that I'm making. You've, you've carved pumpkins before, right? At Halloween? There you go. Pretty much what you're doing. Okay. I'll finish this one up and then I'll start chopping it. And then you can do that other guy for me, all right? Thank you, sir. It's not easy. You got it? I'll help you if you need help. You notice when I cut stuff, I try and cut it, to, uh, try and break it into kind of manageable pieces, especially when I'm, uh, if you're ever dealing with anything that's rounded, and I'll show you with, uh, well, I didn't pull out the carrots, but I'll show you with the carrots normally, just take, a, take an edge off to kind of give you a flat surface. Yeah. Oh, you're dangerous, buddy. No, I'm trying to keep the seeds out of the soup. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Now these, I mean, if you wanted to, you you could uh, you could take take them like like pumpkin seeds and roast them clean up. them and roast.